Uh, and then we also just turn on the football game, which is usually the Detroit Lions playing somebody. Um, uh, so I'm sure we're going to throw on the football game. Some of us watch, some of us don't. But most importantly, we gather together with food and fellowship. Aren't y'all looking forward to that? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm super excited. But also, something that my, uh, my parents brought up one day, and uh, we started doing this uh, here and there, is we started creating a list of things that we're thankful for uh, when it comes to Thanksgiving. How many of you guys have a tradition like that? Yeah, a few of you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. You, you create this list of things you're thankful for. It could be anything. It could be, I'm thankful for breathing. It could be, I'm thankful for my car. I'm thankful for my brothers, my my sister, I'm thankful for my parents. Like, like you just start adding this list, and obviously, like, it starts going and going and going and going, and keep on going, you know? Like, because you really do realize that there's a lot to be thankful for, right? But something that I find that I did every single Thanksgiving is after I presented this list to my family, the next day after Thanksgiving, what happens to that list? I throw it away. <laughs> I don't need any more. I've already told my parents what I'm thankful for. Now it's time for Christmas. <laughs> now I'm going to tell them another list of the things I want. <laughs> but how many of you know that Thanksgiving is a little bit more than just spending a day of just fellowship food and telling them what I'm thankful for? Right? Thanksgiving, I believe, was designed to be something we should be doing daily yeah. all throughout our lives. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. You know, um, I was, just because I like doing this when I research for messages, I uh, look at all these different resources. I'll watch multiple sermons of multiple different pastors. I'll, uh, I'll read books uh, that have resources. I'll look up things online, and one of my ultimate favorite things to do is I love looking Greek Hebrew words up in, Bible, in the Bible. I love seeing how it was exactly written back in the day. But researching is fun. That's one of the cool things. Well, sorry, maybe not to someone that goes to school. <laughs> researching is fun when it comes to the Word of God. <laughs> But I, I, uh, I looked at some of these things, and there's some amazing pastors that have a lot of resources. I took some things from Charles Stanley and Andy Stanley, two of my favorite pastors from Georgia, had a lot of great things to say about this. But also I looked up from just on the definition of what in the world is Thanksgiving. Like, tell me what it is straight. And there's a couple things on there, but one of the key things that stuck out to me is Thanksgiving is the expression of gratitude. The expression of gratitude. So what I want to talk about this morning with every one of you is why should we express gratitude? Why should we? So the first point that I have for you about why we should express gratitude is unexpressed gratitude can be communicated as ungrateful. Think about that for a moment. Unexpressed gratitude can be communicated as ungrateful. I have a, a scripture, Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And I think this scripture is a good example, a biblical example of what this means. It says, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was cleansed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his feet at Jesus. I mean, fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, There were not ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Yeah. Now, let's break this down a little bit. First of all, lepers. How many of you know the lepers were outcasts? Mm -hmm. These were people that were literally, they had their own camp. 
because they were unclean. They, they were not allowed to be near uh, the cities and all these different places because of their uncleanliness. Now, one of the ways the lepers could get back into society, if you will, accept the back of society, is if they go to a priest and that priest checks them out and confirms that they are now clean. That is how a leper could make their way back to society. Now, how many know that being an outcast is not a fun life? Especially an outcast that you can't, where you can't show yourself. You have to keep yourself hidden. You got to keep yourself at a distance, and you got to simply beg for things just because of your situation, what you're stuck in, what you have. Nothing that you can do about it. There's nothing. And so. When they hear about this Jesus that's been going around performing healing and miracles, these lepers realize that this Jesus is their only hope of being healed and being able to get back into the normal life that they wanted. Right? So Jesus approaches, and, 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 the, and these lepers are like, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. First of all, I love that word master because... Master means that they have already been in service. That the, this person, Jesus, has already been teaching them. Isn't that interesting? And they simply, in respect, recognize his authority. They recognize who he is. And they simply say, please have mercy on us. Have pity on our situation. And because we have such a merciful God, he did show that pity. Isn't that awesome? So... As we continue, he then tells them, I want you to go to the priest. And they knew what that meant. That means they're going to this priest to show that they are healed. But here's the thing. The Bible doesn't tell us that they're healed right now. It took an act of faith to go to that priest while they're still unclean. So they're going to this priest, and when they get there... All ten of them are healed of their leprosy. But here's the interesting thing. Is only one of them ran, turned back, found Jesus, fell on his feet, and praised him and thanked him for setting him free and getting his life back to normal. Only one. Doesn't that make you kind of upset towards the other nine? Like, those ungrateful people. Like, they were outcasts. Like, why? How could you not go back to Jesus and praise him for the thing that they did, that he did for them? But also, let's, let's take a step back and think this through. Wouldn't you believe that if someone approached these lepers, these nine that were healed, and said, Wow. Jesus of Nazareth healed you. How do you feel? How much you want to bet that all of them would say, we are so happy. We're so thankful. He is who he says he is. We're, pra we're praising him for what he did. You see, I believe these lepers were grateful for being healed. Their lives have changed. Their lives are better. But Jesus recognized that they didn't express the gratitude that was in their hearts. Now, don't want to step on any toes because I'm also stepping on mine. How many of you know that when Jesus does something amazing in our lives, we too often don't express the praise it deserves? Jesus knows the heart of these lepers. He knows that they're grateful. But they never came back to express it. To their, their God, their, the Jesus that was the answer for them. Mm -hmm. Unexpressed gratitude can be communicated as ungrateful. Mm -hmm. These other nine had to have felt the gratitude, but they had just never expressed it. I believe as Christians, we need to learn to express gratitude, mm -hmm. not just feel the emotion mm -hmm. of it. I don't doubt that everybody in this room are grateful for many things in our lives. Grateful for 
your family, grateful for your car, grateful for your, your business, grateful for your children. I mean, there's so many things that now that we're answering Thanksgiving, some things are going in your head about the things you're grateful for. I have no doubt about it. But let me challenge you. What if instead of assuming that the people in your life that assume you're grateful, what about you express it to them this year? Amen. What about you go and tell your wife how you really feel about her? How about you tell your kids how thankful you are for them? How about you go to your boss and express how thankful you are for your job? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I think we can all agree with this point. Withholding gratitude can almost feel like a sickness to us. When you don't truly express, when you don't truly show that you're thankful, like you just kind of bottle it all in, like, don't you think some pride starts taking a little bit more advantage in your heart than it should? You know, I, I also notice, even in my own life, that when we withhold gratitude, it sometimes can cause resistance in relationships. You know? Yeah. Come on. Not expressing gratitude can communicate. Can communicate. You might not feel like you're communicating this, but it can communicate. You owe me for this. You don't deserve recognition. You, you know what? I simply just don't appreciate you. We don't want to communicate that. That's not at all what we're trying. When, when just simply because we don't say thank you, that's not what we're trying to say, right? But how many of you know that when you're in the situation where you're not being thanked, and you do something above and beyond for this person, and they just don't ever show appreciation towards you. How many of you know that the enemy likes to slip these little sentences in your in your thoughts? Amen. He likes to make you think this person thinks this way to you because they don't show the grateful. Amen. No, we don't want resistance in our relationships. We want our relationships to flourish. Amen. Now, if you knew this secret, by the way, now you do. If you knew this secret, wouldn't you say that it's time for me to show a little bit more gratitude? Right? The second thing about why should we express gratitude is expressing gratitude takes the focus off of self. Takes the focus off of us. I want to go back to my favorite chapter in the book, Philippians, uh, in the Bible. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. We're just going to read a little bit more of it. And, uh, and, and I'm going to pick it up right where we left off. So we're going to be starting in verse 8, as y'all know before. So it says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Verse 10. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. Love that scripture, I'm telling you. I want to break this scripture down a little bit. First of all, if you ever see in the Bible anyone, if you ever see repeated phrases, repeated words, so the Bible wasn't written in our type of punctuation. So you're not going to see an exclamation point unless you're reading the message. Um, but what you're going to see is this rejoice. I will say it again, rejoice. 
This is emphasis saying the importance of rejoicing. The importance of giving praise to God. Now, I think it's something we don't want to oversee and get past and just read it because it's like, oh, they're just repeating themselves. I think it's very vital that we get our focus off of us and onto Him. Amen. Start getting an idea of being like, Lord, like, I made it to church this morning. And I'm so thankful that you gave me the opportunity, the car, the gas, even though it's outrageous, the gas, and also the fellowship of this church. I mean, like, you, if you start getting your mind off of, like, oh, i got to wake up to go to church this morning, and, you know, I'm just going to drag my feet to church. Someone's sitting in my chair. How dare that person. I'm going to sit in this chair over here. Clearly, they don't care that that's where I sit. <laughs> Pastor Taylor's up there doing his long offering again. My gosh. <laughs> but the truth of it is you're in church. You're in a place of fellowship among believers. You're in a place of freedom to worship God. You're in a place to receive the word from someone that spent their life studying it. <laughs> and then you get to respond in that word. You get to put action to it. And then you get to go home and you get to live that out. And when you really start taking your focus off of yourself... You start realizing how thankful you are and how awesome God is for all these awesome opportunities you do. I don't care how cliche it is. This is the truth. So, I also love, uh, as I mentioned a little while ago in the sermon about how it says, do not worry, do not be anxious. Instead, in thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Um, I thought this is very interesting because um, this, uh, well, also, wait, one more. I'm going to continue that. And the peace of God will follow after you seek and pray, seek Him and praise Him. Just in the summary of it, the peace of God will follow with all this stuff. It's, you know, I, um, I remember when I was in Florida, I just uh, am now in a season of transition. I am between my job in Florida and now trying to figure out where in the world the Lord wants me to work now. Um, and I remember that I needed to go away for just a little bit of time. I needed to go home and just process this and what I'm going to do. And as I'm leaving, I immediately felt like a failure. I started thinking like the reason why that I'm no longer at this job is because I did something wrong or multiple things wrong. And then I thought that was all I was going to face. No, then there was anxiety came in. Yeah. Then I started realizing, wait, if that's the case, am I even working for another youth pastor position? And then I'm like, wait, I'm still in Florida. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Like, and I mean, the list just kept going on and on and on. And I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit stepped in here because I turned on worship music in my car. And I started praising Him. I started, I just let that go and I started praising God. And then as I did that, I started thanking Him. I started thanking him for this job, this opportunity. I started, then I started going back and forth. And I was like, God, like, I brought this person to the Lord. God, I, there was a girl that was cutting herself in my class, in, I mean, in, in my group. And I walked her through that. And now she's healed and she's living for Jesus. Like, I started going through all these things I'm thankful for. And do you think I felt like a failure after that? No, I started praising him. I started being thankful for him. And I started bawling. I started crying because I started to realize that, my goodness, that God is going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's coming next. I don't know where I'm going to go next. I don't know what I'm going to do. But God's going to take care of it. Amen. And I just got to trust in him. Amen. All of a sudden, that worry, that anxiety started going away. 
That is why that scripture is one of my favorite scriptures. Amen. Contentment comes from praising God and thanking Him. As we're going to Thanksgiving, contentment is probably something that we're trying to reach. But today, you can start thanking Him and praising Him for everything He's been doing in your life. Amen. And I promise you that you'll reach contentment knowing that He's your provider. You know, it's funny, I, um, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to share any particular stories, but I think we can all relate to this. Hopefully you're not this person. But how do you know that no one likes to hang out with an ungrateful person? No one. <laughs> and hopefully you're not that person. And if you are, just praise him and thank him, and that contentment should help you a little bit. But... I also noticed that even though no one likes to hang out with ungrateful people, but people love and are drawn and gravitate to someone who is grateful, right? I, I love so to me one of my, my love language is words of affirmation. I love when someone affirms me, <laughs> and I will tell you I gravitate towards the people that affirm me. <laughs> and it's interesting because like I I, I love that. My parents have been trying to teach us, uh, you know, for us for a long time about being thankful for the situation stuff. Um, but I, I love thinking about this. Just, just imagine this with me. I, I, if you've seen this before me, I'm before, wow, it's incredible. Imagine you giving a ride to your teenage son or daughter. And as soon as you pull into that parking lot and they get out of the car, before they walk, they stop, they turn around, they say, Thank you so much for taking me to school this morning. I love you. How many of you know that as a parent, you're like, well, I'll be here tomorrow morning too to drop you off. <laughs> of course, like it's this amazing thing. Hopefully teenagers in here, hopefully they've just heard that. But isn't it also like you love grateful people? This is what this is how the Lord designed us to be. There is peace when we express gratitude to those around us. My final point, and if this doesn't wrap it all up, I don't know what else would. God deserves our daily praise. Why do we express why do we need to express gratitude? Because God deserves it. Every single day. Psalms chapter 92, verse 1 through 5. Gosh, uh, Psalms, man. If you want to talk about praising him. Listen to this scripture, what David writes. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night. To the music of the flute and the harp. To the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the work of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. Psalms are truly beautiful. David, David's one, he wrote most of the psalms. He's one of many people that did write the psalms. But I love David's heart. I mean, literally, God says this is a man after his own heart. Like, so I love listening to David's thoughts and prayers and stuff. And this past, uh, this past Wednesday, I, I, I challenged the youth group to write a song of thanksgiving to the Lord. And uh, in this, I, I realized that this is only the second time in my life that I actually did this. And I remember the very first time I wrote a song to God, my own heart poured out in thanksgiving and praise to Him. I wrote this song when I was a senior in high school, and my senior, uh, my my uh, teacher actually challenged us with this too. It was actually not even a challenge; it was actually a project. It was our philosophy teacher. His name was Doctor Pop. Love that man. He's watching. Um, uh, Doctor Pop told us to write a song and give it to us by the end of the week, and he obviously went through Psalms, explained what that means, and and I took time. I got alone with the Lord, and I started writing this song out. And tears flowed. Mm -hmm. And the more and more that I wrote about it, I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. I just was so thankful 
for God and how good he is to me. He is so intimate with us. We have such a unique testimony to him that no one else has. And as I discovered this and start writing this, I just, it was beautiful. And I, I turned it into Dr. Pop, and uh, however long it took him to grade it, he came back, back to me. And this is, sadly, this is actually sad. But he came back to me and he said, Taylor, I read every single song in your entire class. You are the only one that actually did a real song to the Lord. I saw your heart when I read this. Don't you think God deserves some praise, some honest, heartfelt praise? You know, if we took into account all the things to be thankful for him, it truly will blow our minds. Charles Stanley, like I mentioned before, is one of my favorite preachers and um, been ministering to me as long as I can remember and to my family. He wrote this list of why we should praise him daily. And I love it. And I'm going to read what he wrote. This is why we should give him thanksgiving a daily, uh, on a daily uh, point. Number one, we were chosen before the foundation of the world. The Holy Spirit indwells within us. We are eternally secure. We have been given the gifts of the Spirit. We have intimacy with Him. We have peace that surpasses understanding. Unconditional love is given to us by Him. Moment by moment, we get to be in the presence of God. He provides for our every need. He gives us divine protection. He will give us a bodily resurrection. Amen. Blessings of God's atonement. Forgives us of all of our sins. We have an eternal home in heaven. And this right here. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I started 
thanking him. And I started giving him just, just I went through a list like I told you. And, and uh, as I started thanking him, I, um, I felt his presence come on me so strong. And I started just bawling my eyes out. Um, and I just felt his gentle touch on me. And I, I, in that moment, just couldn't stop giving him a list of things that I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I just couldn't speak. I just sat there and just was crying and experiencing him and feeling his presence. And it was so beautiful. And um, I was telling God, I'm like, God, like, this is just the coolest thing. I'm about to get up there and preach a message about how thankful I am. I mean, how thankful we should be towards you. And here I am giving you that exact praise. And I'm getting this amazing moment with you. I wonder if I stand with me. I want you to have that moment. Right now, I'm going to do that moment. And if it's not now, God is going to go with you everywhere you go. You're never going to get away from him. <laughs> but I encourage you, let this word remind you that expressing gratitude is truly beautiful valuable is necessary in our lives. And it's, it's the season for it. You know, when I was spending time with God there, I just started, I, I almost felt like I should like ask for forgiveness. I almost felt like I should you know, tell them I'm sorry for all these things that I've done. Like, you know, you just start going through all this stuff, and God just didn't get me there. He just wanted me to be in His love. And so I want this moment for you guys to be an opportunity for you to be in His love. So we're going to go into this song, and I want you to think on these two questions. Should be right behind under my own time. Um, uh, think on the questions. How often are we thankful? Is there any gratefulness that isn't being expressed? And this is what I want you to do. After you process that, process that with the Lord, I want you to start thanking Him with all your heart. It can start small and go into the big things. But really take this opportunity to praise Him. He deserves every bit of it. Amen. Father God, I pray over your people. God, would we be people, Jesus, that truly want to desire to express how grateful and how thankful we are for everything in our life. To the hard, tough seasons, to the abundant seasons, let us be people of content. Let us be people, Jesus, that want to flourish, God, and, and just giving thanks in everything that we do. You deserve all of our praise, Father. So God, we lift you up this morning. All of us with thanksgiving on our hearts. We love you.